Hello everybody and welcome to Frookin FX where I'm gonna show you today how to properly integrate your 3D model into your scene, how to make it look like it's actually part of it. And this is a pretty easy tutorial to follow, it's just a couple of steps that you'll have to to do um some things that you have to keep in mind. I'm gonna be covering both cases in you if you are using a still image or if you you're using an animation like I'm doing. Obviously if you're using a still image it will be pretty much easier. So I'm gonna be dropping my footage over here. Uh, I forgot to remove the tripod from there. <laughs> I'm just going to remove this part because the camera moves a little bit. I only want to keep the still footage. I'm going to delete that. And until here more or less. Alright, so in case you're using a sequence like I'm doing, I do recommend you to use a PNG sequence, not an MP4 or AVI, because uh, you consume less space and also you lose less quality. I really like to use PNG sequences when rendering, you know, through the objects and so. I gotta say that uh, this 3D animation wasn't done for me. It was done, I mean, wasn't done by me, <laughs> it was done by my friend from Rotten Bits who did it and it was pretty awesome. Obviously something really important when coming to integrate a 3D model is the theme of lightning and so that this is something that you have to to do from your 3D software, either you're using 3D Max, Blender, Maya, whatever. You have to keep in mind all what comes to be the, the shadows, the light, it comes from, for example, we have the light coming from this place, from the sun, and we have already rendered that, <clears throat> so that is something that you have to do from your 3D software, but I'm going to be showing you how to import what we already have. So, okay, the first, the very first thing that you have to do is uh, obviously track the, the footage in case you have a moving camera, but I don't. You can use either the tracker, the 3D tracker from After Effects, which is pretty awesome. But if you're using uh, the CS4 or the CS5, I think didn't have the, the tracker either. You can just get the the track motion tool, and it can work. Uh, also, pretty cool. So <clears throat> I have a still image, so I don't have to do any kind of tracking. Uh, now we're going to do uh, some masking because I have here some stones that should be behind my behind my legs and the radio so I'm gonna be making a new solid we'll put it in visible mode and I'll take the mask tool and I will draw just just a shape over here just like that and I will drawing all the shape that I want the stones to well I'm not going to put it over here because the stones are supposed to this one for example is supposed to do this traveling so I'm just going to keep it over there and over here something like this and I think I can just skip this part and now once you have your masking down you should get your sequence and put it into alpha mat sorry into alpha inverted mat and that will put automatic that will use the the solid that we use it will use this as a mat and it will apply the masking to your footage now you might ask why didn't we just put the mask into the actual footage well because if you want to move now your footage if you want to move your composition you will have to move all the masking and all the stuff, but if you use another solid as a reference, um, the only thing that you have to do is just move your footage, you know, um, it will do all the things that, uh, you know, all the masking will just remain there and you won't have to take the mask and move it again and do all the stuff, you know. So, right. Uh, a very important thing if you're using, my, in my case I, I'm just standing there, I don't have to do any kind of movement, but if you're using a, if you're doing a masking that you're, in which you're, move, you're moving, it's very important that you don't be lazy, okay? <laughs> if you get tired because of 
you know, spending two hours in front of the screen and having an advanced just three seconds of video, just turn off the computer and go for a walk or something, but don't be lazy. It's very important that when you do masking and rotoscoping stuff, you always uh, do the best you can. So now we're going to do some color correction here. So we're going to take the levels and we're going to drop it in our sequence. And we're going to just try to match the color because we can see, for example, this tone is maybe too yellow. It doesn't look really bad, but I'm just going to do some really quick adjustments. Like something like that maybe. Also the green. It's something really subtle, you can all, almost not see it. Over there. But you know, if you take all uh, the levels effect and you go all the channels one by one, uh, moving a little bit, you can see that it will integrate better into your um, into your composition, and it will look much better in the future. Now, uh, I have here a moving <coughs> moving objects. If you're using just a still image, there's no need for you to to, to do this step. But if you're using a <clears throat> a footage in which you have moving objects like I do, you will have to add some motion blur to it. I I already have the motion blur as you can see over here. I already, well, my friend already rendered it with motion blur. But if you don't use, if you haven't used motion blur when rendering the 3D object, you will have to go to the time warp effect, drop it in, the, in your sequence, and you will want to leave the speed at 100 then come over here and click on enable motion blur and put it into manual mode this way it will create a motion blur to everything as you can see in here well actually this is a very exaggerated motion blur so we'll have to put less shutter maybe 100 maybe even less just 50 Oops. And you will see that this will create a motion blur. Um, I'm not gonna use it. I'm just going to delete it because I already have motion blur in the in the scene. So the next thing that you would like to do after you have added the motion blur is adding some uh, some actual blur to the whole thing. And because you know there's no footage that is completely uh, sharp, you know, so you would like to add a le camera lens blur because this is the most accurate effect that you could add to your footage. If you want just a quick effect, you can add a fast blur or a motion blur, but if you want an accurate effect, you'll have to add a camera lens blur and put a very low value, maybe even less, 0.5. Maybe 0.3 that will work out because as you can see al although this is supposed to be sharp this is supposed to be you know some uh, knitted image it isn't because obviously it wasn't recreated in a 3d space like these rocks were so you will need that little bit of blur to make it look actually more part of a video um, you will like also now to add an unsharp mask because as you can see over here there's that kind of contrast between the dark and the and the white um, if you're being a subscriber of the channel you will uh, recognize this <laughs> unsharp mask effect so we're gonna get it and we're just going to drop it on top and we will put a high radius maybe five and that will create that uh, kind of contrast that we need. I think I'm gonna put it maybe even more, maybe 10. Maybe that's too much over here. Five. <laughs> Looks okay like that. I'm gonna keep it at seven. Okay, now uh, this footage that I'm using, it has a uh, 
you know, very quickly moving objects, so there's actually no really need for it, but if you're using a still image, I'm gonna use another image that I had around here, 3D, you will see that uh, probably your your video will have noise, will have some will have some noise, you can see over this part, the pixels aren't always still, they're like moving, you know, changing. So you'll want to apply that to your to your actual footage. How you can how can you do that? Well, there's a very cool effect called match grain that you can just put it into your layer and click it on final output so yeah so that you can see how it's gonna look like and get the source layer as your your image <coughs> your image your footage which is this one and that will create an automatically uh, noise uh, based on the footage that I have actually this one isn't really accurate I don't know why sometimes these things happen but you can always um, uh, change that for example by going going here you can put maybe softness up and the intensity down maybe even less point 15 that's not enough and you know you can play around with the values until you get that kind of noise that is also shown in the background video we can see over there that the pixels are moving that they're not still and this uh, especially if you're using a still image or a moving object that is going really slow this is essential to get a an integrated look object but I'm going to delete it because uh, as I said these rocks are moving really fast and there's really no need for it so the next thing that we want to do is uh, give some shades to this because there, there was a tree over here and the rocks are passing this way and we can see that there are some shadows but they don't look to affect the rocks so we want to change that so we're going to add a new adjustment layer I'm going to add a levels effect and put the, the input white put it up maybe not that much something like this and then we'll want to draw a shape obviously if you have no shadows uh, in your footage there's no need for you to do this but I'm gonna do it just in case something like this and then put the feathering up and now you will have to pre-compose the whole thing so that it only applies to your rocks and not to your wall footage so I'm gonna put this as rocks I just hit the microphone <laughs> and I'm going to click here so that I can still see this position and I'm gonna put the input white maybe a little bit more up and now when our rocks come over this place we can see how they change the luminance and you know it's something that it's a very subtle effect maybe probably uh, nobody will <laughs> see that but if you want to have your footage completely accurate uh, with your video integrated you will have you'll want to do that okay so the last thing that we want to do is uh, creating some sort of uh, depth of fill because as you can see over here the pixels are really blurred and over here they're pretty knitted you know pretty sharp so we want to create a deep depth of field ramp and add it to our rocks so we're gonna create a first of all a new layer new solid make sure that is a uh, comp size and we're gonna create a gradient ramp we're gonna drop it and we're gonna create now a colorama effect and what we're gonna do is put the output cycle into uh, where's it into here ramp gray but we will take the white and put it all the way down 
so that now if we put it on multiply mode uh, where's it over here to multiply you can keep in mind that the areas that are darker will be the, the blur will be bigger and um, where you can see there will be no blur so now you can play around over here keep in mind that and I'm gonna put this part lower something like that this is like the depth of field that we want more or less I think something like this and now we can leave this in normal mode and we will want to cut this uh, layer and drop it in our rocks footage in our rocks precomposition sorry and now you'll want to precompose that as depth move all attributes into the new composition and put it on invisible mode and now you'll want to go to your sequence get another uh, camera lens blur and you'll want now to here in blur map put the layer as a reference that is this one depth uh, okay but it applies the opposite way so we will just add a quick invert effect okay alright so now we can see that if you go here we can see that the rocks that are going this way they are uh, out of focus like the pixels of the road over here and those which are more center they look better actually these are too, dis uh, too uh, out of focus so I'm gonna put this little bit up just like that alright so now this looks better and of course you can change the amount of uh, <coughs> of blur that you want if you want less if you want, for example 3 you can just put it in there and it will automatically apply but I'm gonna keep it at 5 I like it like that and this was basically the tutorial now optionally after you have done all of this optionally you can do a side in the video you can put some dust you know or an optical flare for example or put some filters into the image to make it look even better for example create a adjustment layer get a tint effect and put it into a soft light and that will create an automatic contrast maybe change a little bit the colors and that will cr create an automatic contrast that will uh, will make even better everything what comes to be regarding the you know the integration also you can add some camera movement you can you know pre-compose the whole thing effects put this scale up maybe even more maybe something like that and then get the position and hold by holding alt clicking here and write wiggle uh, something like 10 comma 0 0.5 and that will create a nice movement to your layer or it should create a nice movement to your layer I can almost not see it and that will make uh, you know all those little mistakes that we might have encounter with it will just remove them so okay uh, this was basically the tutorial I hope that you enjoyed that you found some tips helpful and I hope that you give a like to this video and you subscribe in case you haven't yet and I really hope to see you in my next tutorial so see ya Hit the